is gay. And if you're an asshole, go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Transformancy spell. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's what. <laughs> to answer your question, <laughs> it's that. I just really need some fucking Harry Malfoy fucking yowie right now. Uh, two instances. Yeah, two instances for two hot wizards. <laughs> my name's Harry Potter, and I'm a wizard. Over the past seven years, my parents and I have been fighting with the most powerful dark wizard of this century. Every year, he came up with new trials for me, and I plotted ways to kill me. In the end... All this brought us the Second Wizarding War. The war was over, many fell during the battle, but we won and life went on. Little by little, everything has been getting back to normal. The new headmistress of Hogwarts, Minerva McDonald, was doing everything possible to restore the school. Therefore, all students of the last year were invited to return to school and continue their education, but it was not obligatory. I thought about it for some time and realized that last year I didn't even notice how much I missed our good good old school. During our school times, everything was so simple except, of course, for the fight against Voldemort. So I've decided that the opportunity to go one <laughs> back to Hogwarts could not be that bad. I have a chance to make up for the lost year and relax as much as people as is possible to relax in school and to learn something new. Ron and Hermione agreed with me. Even though at first Ron was against it, Hermione convinced him otherwise. And then it's the school. Our seventh year, the class, it would seem common grief. Uh, okay, relationship between Slytherin and Gryffindor. For example, if you think about it, Slytherin did not suffer as great a loss as other houses. Technically, not many of their people died. Their losses where their parents and other older relatives got sent to Ax Azkaban. Azkaban. The Malfoys were an exception, of course. Let's not even begin with counting the losses of our side, the Gryffindor side. Let's get back to school instead. My great pleasure, all the wonders of the first school day were still there, unchanged. As soon as the first years got sorted into respective houses, they could all enjoy a wonderfully delicious dinner. A wonderfully delicious dinner. dinner. Do you think, like, what, some years, like, everyone just kind of gets sorted into one house because it's, like, fate or whatever? Yeah. Or, like, do they just kind of, like, put you wherever you're needed sometimes? Like, they they, prob they the probably need to, to keep it kind of... Cause, at least somebody like even. Hufflepuff will get like nothing for a year. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like there's no, there are no hu people like there are no Hufflepuffs coming in, but we gotta put somebody. It's just like, all right, well, all right, well this this Ravenclaw's <laughs> gotta go there, and just so that they're not like empty. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna skim a few from the other houses, and we'll just be like, all right, <laughs> you guys are totally Hufflepuffs. <laughs> Didn't bother with good news. There I was, looking at Ron and his enthusiastic goblin. Wish I had to join him, so I did. Whatever. Just like always, the director started talking. So strange. I don't like this font, really. No. It's hard to read. The, the white on yellow is... is... shitty. <laughs> it sucks, I hate it. Interesting. Who's gonna feature us the defense this year, he said with his mouth full. Ron Weasley. Ronald Weasley. Uh, Miscusi, I did not even notice that the defense against the dark arts teacher's seat was empty. Suddenly, the part of the students which were still listening to the director's speech gasped loudly from either fear or discontent. Hermione would also not keep silent. What's wrong? I wasn't listening. What did she say? Some outstanding Slytherin graduate is going to be with our be our new teacher. The secrecy is a bit odd, though. They could have at least mentioned his name. Whoever it is, he's from Slytherin, so I don't think that it'll be someone who would want to teach us anything. But on the other hand, we already know more than them. 
For these words, I received a light slap in the head from Hermione. Aye. Yeah. Uh, the answer <laughs> was enough to give a student. No one knew exactly who it was. The sun has come up and the moon has come down. A long the... ago, somebody fucked a corn. <laughs> no hurry whatsoever. The first lesson was supposed to be da 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 da. Defense against dark art. Oh, and as if that was not enough. It was the joined lesson with Slytherin. Grab my books, my bag, my robe, and straighten my tie. With that, I was ready for the day. If I was able to beat Voldemort and stay alive after a year with Umbridge, you could say that I was not ready for anything. But I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> I wasn't ready for love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hermione were waiting for me in the living room. After an exchange of greetings, we went together for class. We arrived. Part of the class has been occupied by the other students, so Hermione and Ron went to find ourselves a place to sit, too. I stopped in the doorway, an avalanche of memories about a single good da da teacher slowly but surely descended onto me. For Remus Lupin, I felt an overwhelming wave of sadness. And then I heard a familiar voice, which belonged to a man I sometimes remembered during summer. Okay, okay, sometimes, but pretty frequently. Move, Potter. You're in my way, you know. I remember there was a commercial for Harry Potter toys when we were growing up. Yeah. And, like, I've never heard his name before, and I thought they were saying, Get wrecked, Mouth Boy! <laughs> and uh, I was like, who's Mouth Boy? It's Mouth Boy. It's Mouth Boy. <laughs> I love he lost that cocky attitude of his. He'd somehow changed over time and become a different person, but I've soon realized that I was wrong. Mouth boy. Mouth boy. <laughs> I looked back at him with contempt. The pretty blonde, always rare to ruin my mood, was standing behind me. He looked just as you'd expect, his hair smoothly combed back, neatly ironed school uniform and robes. And the ever-present smirk. Judging by the... Judging by just the looks, one wouldn't be able to guess the scars he had and how many of there were, like, if any at all. Anyway, so good at pretending, that bastard! Well, I know you've missed me, but the class is about to begin. Snapback. Of course. You're not gonna take it from Mouth Boy. Yeah, no. Nobody needs to take it from Mouth Boy. That's why they that's why nobody calls him his real name. It's just Mouth Boy. It's just Mouth Boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it should go to hell. Calm down, Potter. I'm just trying to get to the classroom, but you're not letting me. I do not uh whatever. I turned and went to the classroom, frowning and sat down next to Hermione. The class started. The door to the room itself slowly closed, and the students were silent in anticipation. Then, from the teacher's room down the stairs, came the person I did not expect to see. For a couple of seconds, it was someone's joke and burst into the laughter, so it had to be true. Our new teacher was none other than Lucius Mouthboy. Good what? morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lucius Mouthboy, and this year I will be your defense against the Dark Arts teacher. We all start with the most popular spells and charms for your protection, and gradually proceed to attacking spells. This is the Conjuration, or, uh, no, um... Abjuration. Ab abjuration? Yeah. Uh, evocation is what I was thinking. Uh, Fireball. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Evocation. Yeah. That's an evocable. Although I'm aware that in the last year, many of you have already experienced the strongest and worst of them. In addition, we will try several mind spells. However, I doubt that any of you will be able to master these. You can see how satisfied and motivated the Slytherins got, and how the Gryffindors immediately drooped with a gloomy sigh. I looked at Mouthboy, who looked at me with the same amount, same moment, and our eyes met. Though I saw him smile for a second, probably just my imagination, though. 
Ron leaned closer to me and whispered. That's absurd. That's absurd. I cannot believe this ferret's father will be our teacher. Hmm. Uh, he will make sure that the entire Gryffindor fails the subject just because it's Gryffindor. Was that McGonagall's thinking? Most likely someone forced her to accept this. She had no choice. Or control over anything, apparently. Uh, still to my surprise, the rest of the lesson went smoothly. The Elder Malfoy talked about some different wards, and as much as I didn't want to admit it, the lesson was really interesting. It was too suspicious. The good thing was that for the rest of the Hogwarts felt like old Hogwarts, while well, homework was no longer taken as seriously as before. The majority of lessons was absolutely boring, and there were some pleasant exceptions. One of those exceptions, again to my grudging surprise, turned out to be the defense against the Dark Arts. Ta -da! Despite the fact that our teacher was Lucius Mouthboy, all the mutual prejudices of Gryffindor had managed to earn some solid points. Maybe the war did change him for the better. Maybe. The life went on, and so did time. With every day, the overall sense of peace and quiet increased, pushing us further and further away from the war's end. Returning to school was a really good idea. With our normal lives back, we did not even notice winter approaching. There's just a whole bunch of ice zombies on yeah. the <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. That. Should have seen this coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As usual, one morning, we were having yet another lesson of the defense. Don't worry, those ice zombies won't do much to you. Yeah. They're not really a problem, they just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> there are other events that take away more characters. Yeah. So. <laughs> Today's lesson will be covering something not as usual. Today, we will talking, be talking about something that most of you probably have never heard about before, although I do acknowledge that there might be exceptions. I'm trying to learn a very fascinating detail, ability, transformance. Here we go. This is the meat and potatoes. Alright, let's get into this transformance shit. And I see that Miss Granger wants to tell us what that is. For a few seconds, Hermione's cheeks got one shade redder, but she regained her coolness soon after, and got up from her seat. Um, Transformancy is the ability to exchange minds. In other words, a wizard relocates his or her mind to the body of another wizard, gaining full control over it. At that time, the second wizard gains access to the physical form of the first wizard and is able to control the first body in a similar manner. The process occurs simultaneously, so both host bodies will lose their minds for only a millisecond. Thank you, Miss Granger. Five points to Gryffindor. Five points, points to Gryffindor! Gryffindor. <laughs> like One that. million points to Gryffindor for <laughs> vanquishing the Dracula. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and tell everyone that my dad is Valmar, <laughs> you hairy piece of shit! Uh, <laughs> I should have their mindsets look. Oh, that takes me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an old one. Yeah. <laughs> I should rewatch that. Yeah, I wonder how well that holds up. I don't know. Check out Wizard People, dear readers. Check out Wizard People. Watch that instead of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I sincerely doubt that anyone here would be able to successfully carry out the reallocation of the mind. The relocation of the mind. However, you must at least be aware of it and try it at least once. Everyone's gotta try it once. No, oh, you gotta try this shit, dude. Transformancy requires crazy. the consent of both wizards, so only a small number of people use it. Yeah, um, I kind of wonder if that's true. Yeah. And that's just a little ethics lesson he's trying to, yeah. to push into this. Yeah. Also, to increase the chance of successful outcome, wizards must be have tactile contact when casting the spell Transformance. Lastly, both wizards have to pronounce the spell in unison. It's the fusion dance. Yeah. 
It's the fucking fusion. You had to dance. do the fusion dance, but like with your wands. But like you gotta hold their dicks. You be, yeah, hold one one hand on the wand, one hand on the wand, dude. Yeah, you gotta be holding both of their dicks and being both of them. <laughs> yeah. <It's... laughs> Fake does not last more than half an hour because at some point the body starts rejecting the other mind, prompting a return to both of its original states. I will now split into pairs. We will begin. Mr. Longbottom and Mr. Weasley. Miss Granger and Miss Patil. Mr. Potter. Lucius looked at me, then he looked at someone else. I followed his gaze. Are you for real? And Mr. Malfoy. <laughs> oh shit, it's time. Eh? Nani? Do you not agree, Mr. Potter? No, no, it's all okay. I looked at Draco and... He saw just as surprised as I was. There was an expression of complete confusion mixed with a bit of shyness all of a sudden on his face. I was somehow... It was somehow comforting. I don't think it was. Wait, yeah. why was he shy, though? I've never seen a shy Malfoy, like, ever? Of all people, it had to be Malfoy. He definitely was... He's not my closest mindset. It took a few more minutes for Lucius to finish pairing the students. Man... Speaking of mindset, do you remember Elliot Hulse? Do you remember the DEEP BODY BREATHING INTO YOUR BALLS guy? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Shake your balls! <laughs> you don't like... have to be a good boy all the time! Yeah. <laughs> and in the comments they're like, Hey everyone, this is an advanced mindset. Is, don't it, try this if you don't know what you're doing. It, it, it is a very advanced mindset. Each pair will take turns attempting the mind exchange. Well, Lucius was right. Everyone tried their best, but no one was able to perform it successfully. Finally, it was our turn. I stood up and stepped forward. So did Malfoy. We stood, facing each other. Come on, boys, join hands. No one's going to bite. Lucius walked over and slightly pushed us closer together. Draco silent silently held out his hand it reminded me of the time when Malfoy offered me his friendship back then a long time ago during our first school year ocean man take me by the hand lead me to the land he took his hand Malfoy blushed again oh what hiding some feelings under there huh and then so you're gonna switch and you're gonna be like wait a second now that I'm in Malfoy's body I suddenly have a boner Probably. That's weird. <laughs> but he quickly recovered, returning to his imperturbable self. Scared, Potter? You wish. We were standing there, staring into each other's eyes. On the count of three, pronounce the spell. One, two, three. We both uttered the spell. For a second, everything went dark. And nothing else happened. Try again. We've tried again, and suddenly, I felt that I could not move. The cold gripped my body, but I soon ceased to feel anything at all. I felt like I was being torn apart, and my body was with great force. Everything disappeared, and I was merely floating nothingness. But after the temporary freedom came the warmth of having flesh and blood. I opened my eyes and looked at myself, in the most literal sense of the word. We did it. it. Can't be. My voice was not my voice. In front of me was a man, looking at me with his green eyes. Congratulations, Mr. Malfoy and Mr. Potter. I do not know how, but you have successfully apparent succeeded. Apparently, you are indeed a similarly tuned. Ten points to each house. Lucius looked ha proud and happy. Draco apparently came to his senses, and I could see his typical cocky expression on my face for a split second. He looks like he's about to activate a trap card. <laughs> he does. He's like, you just <laughs> activated my trap card, Voldemort. <laughs> <sighs> I play Pot of Greed, which allows me to draw two additional cards. And then sudden sharp pain and cold again, as if somebody had pulled me out of that one body and put me back into my own. 
As it turned out, the mind exchange required a lot of energy, so after the defense lesson, I immediately returned to Gryffindor Tower to rest. Night had fallen. Time to have sexy dreams about it. Numbing pain, cold again, I sat up, breathing desperately, but as soon as... Soon realized that it had been only a bad dream, so I fell back into the bed and fell asleep once more. I did not pay attention, pay attention to how quiet it was in the room. It couldn't even hear Ron snoring. Opening my eyes took quite an effort in the morning, despite all the noise outside my room. While people were busy, hurrying to breakfast and classes and all that. Hmm. I searched for my glasses, but soon realized that I could... I could see quite all right even without them. I shook my head and just in case, searched my face too. Make sure I wasn't wearing any glasses in my sleep. This is a green room. It shouldn't be a green room. Isn't that really weird? Strange. Wait, that's not my bedroom. This room. Looked around at all the shades of green. Antique furniture. No neighbors in the bath. Bedroom. Excuse me. Oh no, no, no. It was not a dream. In an attempt to jump out of the bed, I tangled in a blanket and I fell on the floor with a thud. Ouch! Oof! <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Hastily, I rubbed my bro my bruised side and then, recollecting myself, ran to the mirror, which was next to a table in the corner. No! No! Oh no! Oh! 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 oh. A pair of surprised gray eyes were looking at me from the mirror. He sleeps <laughs> naked. Whoa! And the second realization was that Malfoy looked very amusing, funny even, with his always so perfect platinum hair was demoted to ruffled morning bed hair. Well, his elegant body was definitely a treat to look at. Yes, there's that too. I've never had to say you've even thought something like that about a man's body, but this, I have to admit, Draco was stunningly beautiful. And what shall I do with this? One crazy morning for you trying to figure out Malfoy's clothes and other stuff. I wanted to be in time for breakfast because something was telling me that there's going to be Malfoy in my body and was most likely in the same state of shock as I. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> yeah. I hope we didn't have time to curse the whole of Gryffindor. I packed up for today and dashed out to the Great Hall. However, I got caught by Lucius on my way to breakfast. Draco, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Dad. Man, you suck, Mr. Dad. <laughs> Raised his eyebrow. Oh, are you alright? You're acting strange. Not to mention your appearance. I'm fine. I'm just in a hurry. Draco. Lucia says sternly, Come and see me after breakfast. We need to talk. Okay. We need to talk about our plan to take over Hogwarts. <laughs> To turn all wizards into Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? Because we fucking go to school here. <laughs> you will be schooled here. <laughs> and he walks away. <laughs> <laughs> I nodded and hurried away. Finally, the Great Hall, and there I was, sitting on Gryffindor's table, calmly eating breakfast. I almost headed there to settle the matter, but I got caught up by some Slytherin girl. Draco, good morning. Good morning. I think her name was Parkinson. She's the one who'd always hung out in Malfoy's proximity. She smiled and took my hand, pulling me into the Slytherin's table. Reluctantly, I followed her to avoid unnecessary suspicion. You know, people thinking that Malfoy had gone mad and such. Tempting, though. How'd you sleep? Are you feeling better? Yeah, okay. Well, how's your head? Still hurts? Yes, it definitely hurts. I sigh. It definitely hurts a lot. Even that bird brain Potter's fault. It's that bird. <laughs> Fuck. It's that bird brain Potter's fault. Even though he was in your head for only a few seconds, he still managed to mess up your mind. 
<clears throat> Parkinson reached out and gently stroked my head. No. I got angry at her, but remembered that this is Slytherin, and they probably 